Welcome TLC family. Do you have kids who look like you? That is so fun, right? When if you're a parent, I know we've got many parents in our congregation who are possibly watching. Um, it's really fun to see your child grow up and kind of look for those traits like, oh, do they look like me? Do they look like their dad? You know, whose personality is kind of shining through? Who are they similar to? And uh, I know in our family, we really like to do that and kind of tease each other about it, right? Like just the other day, um, we were having a conversation. I was teasing Luke about his ears, right? And then Lael was there and I'm like, Lael, let me see your ears. Do you have daddy's ears or do you have my ears? She has my ears. Um, and so, you know, you look for these different characteristics to see really like how your, you know, your genes have been passed on in your children and how much they're like you or, you know, your spouse. And, uh, and so what our title is today is you look like your daddy. Um, and you'll see how this ties in because we've been talking about walking in the spirit, right? That's our series. Um, and we're really trying to develop an awareness of how the Holy Spirit is with us and in us every single day and just looking to him, just acknowledging that he's there, listening for his voice as he's speaking to us, because we know you know, if we, I figured this out as at a young age, you know, if I could just know the will of God, follow the will of God, then everything would turn out good, right? He knows me. He has beautiful plans for my life. And I, if I just tap into that. If I just, you know, listen as he's guiding me, then things are going to turn out better than I could ever have imagined on my own. And I can tell you guys, you know, as a teenage girl consecrating my life to the will of God and just endeavoring to be sensitive to his voice and walking that out, I have never been disappointed um, by following what God has told me to do. And it really has been an adventure. It really has been, you know, exceedingly abundantly above all I could ask or think. You know, God is so good and he's a good father. You know, if you imagine the plans that you you dream of for your own children right once you get to know kind of what their desires are and their passions are you try to create those opportunities for them right you want them to succeed and you want them to be happy and then sometimes when they, you, they mess up you're like no if you just listen to me right i can help you avoid these pitfalls in life well, that's like our Heavenly Father. He's got these grand designs for you. Um, and He knows exactly what's going to satisfy you, exactly what's going to make you happy, exactly what gives you purpose in this life. And so if we tune into that, man, it's going to be quite the adventure. It's going to be a great ride. And so, you know, talking about walking in the Spirit, you know, Galatians 5.16 says, uh, Walk in the Spirit and you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And we've talked a little bit um, so far about how you have a choice, right? Whether you choose to follow the Spirit of God, follow, you know, really the reality of heaven that's on the inside of you, or whether you lean on the flesh and just kind of choose what's natural. And we know if we do things by the Spirit, if we walk in the Spirit, um, then we reap life and peace. That's when, you know, all the good stuff starts flowing in our life. If we're constantly leaning on the flesh, then that's death and destruction. And that's everything that God, Father God would have you avoid. He wants you to have a beautiful life. And so, you know, walk in the spirit. You shall not um, fulfill the lust of the flesh. Well, what the question I kind of want to answer in today's lesson is, you know, why can we be expected to walk in the spirit. Why is this something that, you know, the, that the Bible can say, do this and expect that we can, because I feel like some Christians are like, well, walk in the spirit. What does that mean? You know, I, I feel like this is a foreign concept, but really guys, the things of the spirit are natural to you as a believer, as a child of God. So let's establish that today. All right. And so I want to start in John 1, verse 12. John 1, 12. It says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name, 
who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You know, this is so simple and so clear, guys. It says, if you believed in Jesus, if you said, yes, Lord, I believe you came to die for me. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Then you became a child of God. Now, what were you born of? Because we use the term born again, right? How you were born once naturally from your mother's womb. Um, but then when you receive Jesus, you are born again. And this verse explains what are you born out of, right? It talks about a lot of different natural options. And then it says, but no, you're born of God, a child of God, born of God, of his substance, of his DNA, of his essence. That's what you were born out of. And so what is Father God then? It says um, in John 3, 6, that that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. We know that God is a spirit and that you created in his likeness and his image you are a spirit as well, born right from God. And so, you know, think about in the very beginning, when Adam and Eve were created in the image of God, they were created perfect spirit beings, right? And they had this relationship with God and they walked with him in the garden and, you know, they were given responsibility, right? Naming, naming the animals and having dominion over the earth and things like that. And uh, you can see, them imaging, right, reflecting Father God and His characteristics. Um, but then what happened, right? We know that, that when sin entered the world, when they messed up and they, they sold out to the devil, um, that, that that nature was corrupted. Um, and that image that they were meant to reflect Father God as was really broken. It was tainted. And so sin really messed up you know, everything. And then from that point on, every person born in this world was born with a sin nature. There was that taint, that corruption just built into us. So it was natural for us to make mistakes, natural for us to lie and steal and hurt each other and all of those things that don't come from God. That's not the nature of God, but that is the nature of our enemy, the devil, right? And that really, that was the world that that we were born into. And so, you know, what had to happen um, for it to really to help us with that problem, we had a nature problem, right? Who we were, our essence was the problem. Um, we couldn't just say, oh Lord, just forgive me of my sin because your nature was to sin, right? Your nature was just to continue making mistake after mistake. Um, but when Jesus came, and this is the exciting part, guys, when Jesus came, he d did away with the sin nature. He actually annihilated it, the Bible says, um, and he made you brand new. And this brand new you is born of heaven, born of God. You look like your daddy. And so Heavenly Father, all of his characteristics, you know, and the fruits of the Spirit, which we'll talk more in depth in a later lesson, love, joy, peace, etc., that is now your nature. That is you. You are made in the image of God. You look like him. You reflect him to the world, right? We're ambassadors of Christ. So when people look at you as a believer, they see Jesus, right? They see his nature, his goodness, his love, his faith, all of that flowing out of you. That is now who you are. And so when, when the Bible says you walk in the spirit and you'll not fulfill the lust of the flesh, why can we be expected to walk in the spirit? Well, we are a spirit being in the nature of God. We are born of God, born of, our, of his substance, and we are like our father. We have his DNA on the inside. And so, yeah, it's not a foreign concept for us to walk in the spirit. That is something that comes natural to a believer. 
it is just you know what we do day after day after day is we we can tap into that we can walk in the spirit hallelujah and so ephesians 2 22 says in whom you are also are being built together for a dwelling place of god in the spirit so again we've said this but the holy spirit moves in right he now dwells in you we read another verse before it said we are a temple of the holy spirit and now this again describes us as a dwelling place that the spirit of god lives in so your spirit is the part of you that was made brand new and born of heaven when you received jesus and that's where the holy spirit comes to reside that's his home he's with you so close you know even if you picture a friend or a loved one being beside you right and maybe holding your hand and that kind of thing the holy spirit is even closer than that he is on the inside he never leaves you and so that's the beauty of this relationship why can we experience all of this because you look like your daddy you are like father god born of him and so you know this is now exciting for us to to know that we are it's natural for us to hear his voice um really the the learning curve that comes with you know becoming born again when you accept jesus we know that you know your spirit is the part of you that is born again and made brand new your soul your mind well will intellect and emotions that's the part we got to kind of work on and teach and the bible talks about renewing our mind right getting into the word and letting it wash our souls and and really um, to help us understand this new life this new reality that we're we've been born into um, and then we contend with our flesh. We still live in this fleshly body who has, you know, temptations and desires and things that we have to say no to. We have to discipline our flesh, right? And so the really the, the learning curve that comes with um, becoming born again is just learning to look on the inside rather than leaning on the flesh. So, you know, when it comes to making a, a right or a wrong decision kind of thing, you know, checking on the inside and saying, okay, God, you know, what would you have me to do here? Um, remember the old bracelets, you know, WWJD, what would Jesus do? Jesus, what would you have me to do here? And looking on the inside instead of just reacting from the flesh, right? Reacting from, you know, this, this, this flesh that is just used to doing whatever it wants, right? And so, you know, that's why, guys, again, we can expect to walk in the Spirit. Um, and that's why the Word commands us to do that, because this is you now. You are a spirit being born of God, born of His substance, and it is natural for you to walk in the things of the Spirit. And so be encouraged today. You know, I challenge you over the next day or so, just look on the inside. Just tap into, you know, what the Holy Spirit is telling you and reject the things of the flesh instead of, you know, just reacting maybe as you would use, you used to. Give, give Him time to speak to you and show you what you need to do. Amen. Be blessed.